on our Christmas Eve special, I want to start out by wishing all of you a Merry Christmas, whether you are watching this on Christmas Eve or even on Christmas Day. I hope that this video complements your celebration of Christmas. Gifts are a large part of how we celebrate Christmas. Chances are you spent a lot of time selecting and purchasing gifts for your spouse, children, extended family members, or those you celebrate Christmas with. With the busyness of the Christmas season, it is sometimes easy to get wrapped up in buying gifts or even hoping for what you will receive. Not that there is anything wrong with giving or receiving gifts. In fact, it is rooted in some Jewish traditions. Take for the example the celebration of the Feast of Purim that celebrates the escape of the Jews from Haman's evil plot to kill them, as reported in Esther. This is celebrated by feasting and giving gifts. Esther 9, the last part of verse 22, says this, that they should make them days of feasting and gladness, days for sending gifts of food to one another and gifts to the poor. Jewish weddings were also characterized by similar activities. The point is that even the Bible teaches that some things should be celebrated with feasting, joy, and gifts. The practice of exchanging gifts at Christmas is based on biblical concepts like these. However, the gifts we exchange can become a distraction from the most important gift of Christmas, Jesus himself. Really, I think the reason that we began exchanging gifts at Christmas in the first place was to emulate the gift that God gave when he sent his son. It is the most special thing that Emmanuel did come to live among us. In this abbreviated video, I want to share three different aspects concerning the greatest gift of all, Jesus Christ. First, I want to point out the promise of the gift. Let's take a look at Isaiah 9, verse 6. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Centuries before Jesus came as our Savior, he was prophesied to come as God's gift to mankind. This verse clearly states that a child would be born and that the Son to be given would be equated with God through the names that are listed in this verse. These names would not be used to describe an ordinary man, but the Son of God himself. Why should an ordinary man be called Mighty God or Everlasting Father? Even in the Old Testament, we are told that this gift would be a divine gift. This child would have authority over government and bring perfect peace and counsel to the world, even if that would look different than what the Jews thought. They thought that this would lead to a tangible military conquest that would deliver them from the hands of the Romans. Really, this was intended to be a spiritual deliverance that would bring peace and counsel to those who believe, along with the promise of eternal life. As much as we can appreciate the promise of this gift, we can be just as appreciative of the arrival of the gift. Many of you might have already heard the following verses this Christmas season, but it is something that is important to consider. Luke 2, verses 10 through 12 says this, And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David the Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling cloths 
Bats and Lying in the Manger. How can one read this passage and not be in awe of how this fulfilled the prophecy from Isaiah and other parts of scripture? Since I'm sure it would be frightening to see an angel, the proclamation began with the words, Fear not. The reason that the angel appeared was not to frighten, but to proclaim the good news that would create much joy. Let's like the words in Isaiah, the angel said, For unto you is born. The angel wanted those listening to understand that the most significant birth had just taken place. The Bible says, For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. The one promised had now arrived, and he came to be our Savior. In a world that is overcome with money, fame, misinformation, division, power, and everything else under the sun, the world is just as in need of a Savior today as it was back then when Jesus arrived. The sign of his arrival was the baby they would find wrapped in cloths and lying in the manger. Even though we cannot go and find this child today, we have the birth and life of Jesus recorded for us in Scripture. There are enough things that God has provided us with to act as a sign to show that Jesus has come. The birth of our Savior is a historical fact, and He lived among us. This great gift is something that should give us great joy because our Savior has come. One of the reasons we celebrate Christmas is to remember the birth of Jesus as God's greatest gift. God's gift to us arrived when Jesus was born, but that is not the only reason that Jesus is the greatest gift of all. This gift was promised, and it did arrive. But you also have to consider the impact of the gift. Jesus came to this earth to accomplish a great work. This verse is not always brought up around Christmas, but I think John 3.16 is a great verse to see the impact of, this, of the gift of Jesus. Most people know John 3.16, but I also wanted to include verse 17 because it is also significant. John 3.62-17 says this, For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. It is because God loves us that he sent his Son so those who believe would have life. Apart from Jesus, the world would be condemned and would perish. Jesus came so that people might be saved. The impact of this gift is that people receive salvation and eternal life when they believe in Him. Another verse that shows this contrast is Romans 6.23. For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. What we deserve for our sin is death. But God gives us the free gift of eternal life through the gift of Jesus. This was made possible not just because of the birth of Jesus, but also because of the death and resurrection of Jesus. In giving the gift of His Son Jesus, God also intended that His Son would die for us. Romans 5.8 says, But God shows His love for us, in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. And listen to 1 John 3.16, By this we know love, that He laid down His life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for the brothers. Out of His great love for us, Christ died for us, even though we were still sinners. 
You know what Jesus could accomplish? Giving sinners the gift of eternal life was by becoming the perfect sacrifice through his death. During Christmas, we need to be thankful not only for the birth of Jesus, but also for the sacrifice of Jesus. It is through the sacrifice that Jesus became the propitiation for our sins and paid the price to redeem those who believe in him. It is through his sacrifice that he defeated sin and death. The gift of Jesus would be meaningless without his sacrifice. If he did not do the work necessary to save those who believe, then his birth would not carry the weight that it does for us today as we celebrate Christmas. Let this be a reminder for you about what Christmas is all about. Because Jesus came to this world in the form of a man, he could accomplish the perfect work of salvation so sinners could be saved through their belief. So, when the time comes for you to exchange gifts, Take a moment to remember the greatest gift of all, Jesus Christ. Please be sure to like this video, subscribe to this channel, and hit that notification bell so you never miss when a new video is released. You can also follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Merry Christmas, and until next time, walk in the truth.